Hello Cherries fans and welcome to The Lowdown. We seem to be doing one of these shows nearly every other week. This is great, isn't it? What a busy transfer window has been. Look, pen hasn't been put to paper yet, but you've probably seen on social media that Mark McAdam, Fabrizio Romano and others have conveyed the news that Leeds United midfielder Tyler Adams has had his release clause activated by AFC Bournemouth, which is understood to be around £20 million. He's from the United States, plays for the national team, captains them. He's 24 years old. He's a CDM. He joined for a bit less than what we're paying from RB Leipzig last summer for the Whites. But Bournemouth are getting it over the line over the next 24 hours. There should be some movement on this. Of course, Chelsea look to be in the running, but after their recent acquisitions, I think their need for this player has certainly decreased somewhat. So to talk about it, we have got Joe from the Just Joe Football Channel. Joe, how you doing, mate? You all right? Yeah, uh, football aside, mate, um, things are good. Yeah, thanks for having me on as well, Sam. Football aside, talk to me. Yeah. Why Why are you feeling that way? Um, because at the minute, it's like rats leaving a sinking ship at Leeds United. Um, can't blame the players as such, about, apart from those that are refusing to play, like Willie Nonto. Um, but basically, the contract situation at Leeds United is this. The ownership, or the previous ownership, decided to uh, stick in a 60% wage reduction clause in players' contracts. Mm. However, if the players were then able to go get their their full salaries paid, they were allowed to leave on loan. So, I mean, what's the player going to do? Oh, I'm going to stay at the club and get 60% less money, or I'll move to a club that's going to pay all my wages. So we've got this situation with the loans. I mean, Tyler Adams is different because that's just a straight uh, release clause stuck at 20 million, but it's just a bigger issue that we've got in that Tyler's leaving, Harrison's left. Uh, there's been many more, Aronson, uh, Vorber. So we literally, I mean, at the weekend, Sam, I know this isn't a Leeds podcast, but we had um, eight players on the bench, so we couldn't fill the bench and two of them were goalkeepers. I mean, the squad was really bad as well. It was almost as if it was throwing a cup game team. Do you know what I mean? You're playing lower opposition. Oh, we'll just play these. It's it's not great right now, mate. No. No. Uh, but you must be looking at us thinking, what what on earth is happening? Because Bournemouth <laughs> seemed to be... I mean, firstly, we went in for Marcelo Bielsa. Uh, yep. A number of years previous, your starlet Lewis Cook joined Bournemouth. Um, yes, yes. And then Andoni Iriola, a manager that you were flirting with and you yep. had some initial chats to. And then mm-hmm. recently... Max Aarons, who is almost signing yeah. on the dotted line, the sounds of it, but then changed his tune. And now Tyler Adams as well. What's your perspective on Bournemouth at the moment? Do you hate us? No, I don't. I don't. Um, it's frustrating. Um, it is frustrating, of course. It is. You have to accept the law of the Premier League, Sam. Um, do uh, If I'm being realistic, uh, if we were in the same division, I don't think some of the moves happen, personally. I know Bournemouth fans might disagree. Um, but I've said on, on my channel, it's the law of the Premier League. Not only that, it's an exciting project as well. Um, I, I was talking with my friend last night and then um, after our show, we were saying how excited we were to watch Bournemouth this season. Um, second favourite team, um, I would I, I would say. I'm really, I, I am really ba- backing you this season, uh, Sam. I've got uh, Solanke and Kirkes in my uh, in my fantasy team. I think they're going to do bits this season. Just on Kirkes, we were linked with him as well, uh, a long-standing link, to be honest. So it seems that Bournemouth are following um, a style and sort of similar model that we did. And I think, you know, it's rubbing up fr- fans the wrong way. Those that go, oh, why would he go to Bournemouth? I see it from a different perspective in that, that it's the lore of the Premier League and also yeah. it's an exciting project. I think Iriola, like you say, Falacano would have um, released him at the time we'd have got him. Um, unfortunately, they didn't. And I understand that. They were chasing Europe at the time. And and, and now, listen, I got stick for it. Um, I, there's a show on my uh, on my YouTube channel when Bielsa was initially linked. And uh, just because people used to say to me, it's Leeds United, not BLZ United, because I was that in love with this guy. Yeah. I mean, those, those people are now turning around and going, yeah, we realise what we had, you know, because yeah. they sacked him and now look at the state of the club. But um, I said at the time, I, I, I think I need to buy myself a Bournemouth shirt and I got loads of stick for it. But I, I was just playing, having a little bit of a laugh. But no, I don't hate you. I understand it, mate. It is what it is. 
So Tyler Adams, then tell me yes. about him. Uh, positionally, where does he play? What are his strengths? Yeah. What are his weaknesses? Educate us Bournemouth fans who may not know yeah. about him. I try to, mate. I try to. So it's uh, predominantly a number six, a DM, uh, if, if you like. Um, he's uh, first and foremost, he's a top pro. He's a top pro, and I think you will fall in love with him. Of all the transfers we made last season, we couldn't wait to see the back of all of them, except Tyler Adams. It just yeah. carries himself in in a way that that endears you to him, if that makes sense. Um, obviously, USA men's national team captain. Um, they made it to the World Cup. They're not you know, uh, a poor team anymore. They've got likes of uh, Musa in there, Weston McKenney. I mean, less said about him, the better, but Weston McKenney mm-hmm. and others. Um, so for him to be captain of that team, I mean, he speaks so well as well. I think, uh, you know, he was he, he was asked at the World Cup about relations between America and Iran, and he just dealt with it really, really well. I don't think footballers should be speaking on this matter, but if you see that clip, you see what kind of professional he is and how good of a talker he is. Hence why a lot of Leeds fans wanted him to be captain this season he was their next captain um so yeah personally like as a player as a man great great guy i know a lot of leeds fans will disagree now because he's leaving but again contracts have permitted that um as for the player now on the ball he's not the best sam on the ball he's not the best he's passing for me it's not great. And uh, that was one of the downsides to him. And that's why when I seen him linked to Chelsea and even Brighton, I felt like it weren't the right move for him um, because they're going to dominate a lot of the ball. You know, they dominate a lot of the ball and and whether or not he's able to retain possession, uh, I'm I'm not too sure. Because as I said, the the one thing I will say about him is his passing isn't great and on the ball he isn't great. But, from a defensive standpoint, is phenomenal. He's phenomenal. He covers ground deceptively quick. I think this is what what. what so, say if a player's got a ball, for example, they'll think they'll have more time than what they have. Does that make sense? Because he's able to cover ground so quick. He's deceptively quick in that respect and win balls. He's a battle of me, and and I guess he was our Calvin replacement. And yeah, I got you. this. The, the 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 issue is we've we've brought in Ethan Ampadu. Now Ethan Ampadu's more so the Calvin replacement because Ethan Ampadu can pass the ball. Tyler Adams isn't gonna, you know, spray your balls left and right. He's just gonna give it short, give it to those that can play. But in terms of sitting in front of a back four, he's great at it, mate. And uh, you know, we'll we'll break up a lot of the play. And I think, and I will go as, as far as to say, had he have not been injured, we would have had a much bigger chance of staying in the division just because of his defensive exploits and how good he is in front of that back line. Speaking of injuries, yeah, I mean, I noticed he had a hamstring injury in, yeah. in March and he's not going to be hitting the ground running for us either at the moment because he's carrying an injury. Is he, yeah. is he injury prone? No, no, I wouldn't say so as much, mate. I don't think, no, he just had that one injury at Legion United. I don't know prior to that, but I think as well, a lot of the reports are making it seem like the injury is a lot worse than it is. Like Chelsea apparently pulled out because of an injury because he's going to be injured for four months. That's not true. Like he's already on the grass. He's already training with the team. Daniel Farker said that he's just not at a match fitness level yet because he's not had no preseason, but he has been involved in training. We were told after the international break, it's not too far away really now, is it? So it's only a couple of games. So um, some of the reports will have you believe it's is long term, but it's not. I think, you know, he'll come in and, and I do think he'll hit the ground running and um yeah i don't know who who do you have in that sort of defensive midfield position now well that, that's it well this is a priority for us at the moment at right. the moment it's a combination between lewis cook when he's fit but he's not right. fit at the moment i think he's yeah. a few weeks away uh joe rothwell who's more attacking but you've had to bring him back even philip billing who you uh, you, okay. you usually play further up the pitch he can do a yeah. job back there but you you know you don't want to not have him no. further up the pitch where he contributes yeah to the numbers so I think he's going to be really useful for us obviously you're a you're a man who saw Bielsa's style of football and that's something that Iriola's trying to emulate do you think that Adams yeah. can thrive under that type of football yeah yeah I would would say so as long as he's not tasked with progressing the ball up the pitch you know what I mean like if if he's just going to do that job of, of 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 sitting in front of that back foot and give it to the likes of Billing and give them um, the facilities to be able to show their technical ability more. Like you say, Philip Billing's wasted, isn't he, playing in that role? Yeah, so if, 
if you then are able to push him up there, then you, for me, with Tyler Adams, you don't like, you don't have to, he's seven out of 10 every game, Sam. You won't have to worry about the defensive side of the game. You know that that back four will have protection, which is then going to enable the likes of Billing, et cetera, to be able to get on the ball and do things further up the pitch. Yeah. So, um, again, my main questions on Tyler Adams is his passing ability and on the ball. But defensively, amazing. And, and, and I think he will do well at Bournemouth for sure. Yeah. Do you do you think you know, you got twenty million for him by by the looks yeah. of it? Uh, do you think that's about right? Do you think uh, you've probably got a few more million than you should have, or or what? No, I think I I think it's less. I mean, I, I think we paid seventeen million for him, um, and and a lot of that was due to the fact that he he he'd sort of dropped out at, mm. at Leip, Leipzig, um, was a bit of a forgotten man if you like. But um, I think he played right back there as well. That's that's something to consider as well, Sam, because I don't know. We've seen currently the amount of these um, these coaches now inverting fullbacks and all this yeah. sort of stuff. And that might enable, if you're looking to do something similar, I don't know, but his fluidity being able to drop in at right back, which again might release Max Ahrens to go further Brilliant. up the pitch, you yeah. know? So the fact that he's played at right back, it also gives you the ability to do that. That's why, like, I know it's off piste a little bit. I thought that Caicedo for Liverpool would have been amazing because then it releases the skills of, of Trent, Trent so much more because he can just drop in there. So I think that's something to consider uh, with, with Adams. Uh, back to the price, though, I think, again, I'm disappointed that it's only 20 million. Yeah. Um, you know, because he's at the end of the day, he's USA men's national team captain. You know, he's their star boy, if you like. He's that main, uh, main face, and and like I say, was very, very important to Leeds. And had we have not, had he not got injured, I don't think we'd have got relegated. We wouldn't have conceded the goals as as many as we did anyway. I mean, it was a joke towards the end, like four on the final day against Spurs, who at the time were not winning games and then they came it wasn't scored within a minute because like just just defensively we're all over the shop and just having him missing but it was the same when we had Calvin Sam yeah these players and that's why the likes of Caicedo and Lavia are going as much as they are because these exactly. players are so pivotal in the in today's game because it enables everyone else to do their jobs you know you know what I I remember in the 1990s in in 1990 in fact there was a there was a banner on the Leeds City Council building saying, Bournemouth, we're sorry. I almost feel like we should do one the opposite way around now, but Leeds, we're sorry on the town council building because we sit. Well, what's, yeah. what's the hope for this season then for Leeds? What, you know, what's the aim? Uh, I mean, obviously in an ideal world, you'd like to bounce straight back, but yeah. you, you sound a bit pessimistic right now. Or is that yeah, just I mean... the opening couple of games? No, it's not even the games. It's the squad situation. It's the transfers. I genuinely felt that, we are being with shot of uh, of getting promoted. I look at Southampton and Leicester, they're going to run away with it for me. Uh, the facts are, I, th- I think, you know, Southampton have just sold James Ward-Prowse 30 million. They're going to get 40 or 50 for Lavia. Uh, Leicester sold Madison and Barnes yeah. that brought in 70 million. All our sellable assets, we decided to go, oh, you can have a loan clause or you can have a relegation release clause. So we, we've done ourselves in that respect. And honestly, the squad against uh, Birmingham, where we lost 1-0 at the weekend, our best player was Dan James. And this is no disrespect to Dan James. He's yeah. not great, Sam. I don't yeah. rate him at all. And he was the the best player. We, You know, he failed at Man United. We loaned him at Fulham, so therefore he failed at Leeds. And he yeah. and they didn't want him back. So, yeah, it shows the, the level that we're at currently. Yeah, not good, not good. All mm. right, well, where, whereabouts can people view your yeah. weekly misery then? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, well, I will be, uh, I will be watching Bournemouth. Uh, no doubt, doing be some watch alongs at times because I, I have the plan of watching uh, some of the dearly departed players. So I'm looking forward to watching Bournemouth. So if you're not at the game, you're stuck for something to do. Um, you can follow me at the Just Your Football Show. There's a lot of watch alongs on there, heavily lead stuff, but. Yeah, uh, I do do other stuff as well. And like I say, I'll be keeping tabs on Bournemouth this season. Leeds United light, that's what I'm calling them. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> probably about right. Uh, Joe, thanks so much for coming on. Really appreciate no worries, it, mate. Sam. Thanks for having me. Right, remember, you can do the usual things, like, subscribe and all that jazz. And yeah, soon is going to be announced. Exciting times at AFC Bournemouth. <laughs>